Before I get started with today's video, I just wanted to make two quick announcements. Number one, I want to thank my Patreon subscribers because they've really supported me and because of Patreon, I'm able to sort of like do my more controversial videos there instead of on my main channel, which is unfortunately necessary because, uh, you know, like uh, I, I think I'm inches from getting deplatformed from YouTube, okay? Because, uh, you know, they, they say that uh, crime doesn't pay. Well, on YouTube, the truth doesn't pay. And if you tell too many truths on YouTube, eventually you get the boot. And uh, all my videos are pretty much demonetized, as I've discussed before. And, uh, you know, it kind of sucks. But what really worries me is I think that I'm about to get kicked off permanently from the, from the platform. I hope that that's not true. But, you know, there are little signs and indications that that's, that might happen, okay? So if it happens, well, you know, it's been a blast. The second thing I wanted to talk about is that, uh, you know, I'm continuing with the coach stream, my live stream about business, finance, and economics, but I'm moving it to midnight on uh, midnight Eastern on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sunday nights. Yeah, because it's, it's just more practical for me. Uh, I thought before I could do it at the earlier time. It was basically 11 a.m. or noonish Eastern time, but that's just not practical anymore because certain things that are happening in my real life, uh, basically my kid's ballet lesson is getting in the way. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not able to do it at that time. So instead, it'll be, like I said, midnight, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, midnight Eastern standard, okay? Okay. So let's get on with the video. We live in really bizarre times, if you get right down to it, because we're living in a time where you have to define who you are. You see, in the past, this wasn't the case. In the past, you were defined by what you did. See, uh, say your dad was a cobbler, just for the sake of argument. Your dad was a cobbler, so you were going to be a cobbler. Your, your dad was a locksmith, you were going to be a locksmith. Your dad was a farmer, you were going to be a farmer. And just surviving would create for you an identity, a goal. Survival was enough. <laughs> yeah, because one of the advantages of the life that we're living today is that survival is easy. You know, it's, it's quite easy to survive, to just exist. In the past, people starved to death. In, in the past, if you weren't working your ass off every day, day after day after day, you die. And that happened all the time. But now, because survival is not paramount, because we have created this wonderful civilization that allows us to survive with minimal effort, well, what happens is that a lot of people, a lot of young men especially, don't know what to do. They, they don't know where to aim for. What's their mountaintop? I get these notes all the time. I get these notes like today, as a matter of fact, this morning. I wake up and I have two emails, one from a guy called Lewis and, a guy, and another from a guy called Cole. And they were basically asking the same thing. How, how are they supposed to live their lives and progress if they don't have anything to aim for? What is their mountaintop? What is their goal? I couldn't tell them and I can't tell you because each person, each man has to figure out his own mountaintop. But I can give you some help in figuring out what that mountaintop will be. Picture the man you would like to be. Picture him in detail. Imagine him in your head. Imagine yourself, you, at age 45, 50, the prime of your life. You've got the experience of the past couple of decades, right? That can help you moving forward. You've got the energy and the drive. You're actually gonna be at the peak of your energy and drive when you're like 45, 50. At least that's been my experience in my own case and the experience of my peers, right? You're gonna be like all engines going. So imagine the life that you were living at that age, at 45, 50. Picture that man. Who is that man? What does he look like? What are his interests? What are his goals? What are his priorities? Most especially, what are the things that matter to him? See, I'm not telling you, you know, picture yourself at 45 and picture all the toys that you're going to have at 45. No, 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 no. 
see. Uh, what you will discover, I mean, you're a young man now, right? And you don't have any toys. You want to have a Ferrari and you don't have a Ferrari. At best, you have like, you know, Grand Theft Auto or some shit like that, right? Yeah, but you're going to be imagining the toys, like the f fancy car or some shit like that when you're older. No, don't imagine that. No. Imagine what activity you'd like to be doing. Imagine what kind of social circle you'd like to have. What kind of friends would you like to have? What kind of family life would you like to have? I mean, imagine it and, and, and think of it in the details, in the nitty gritty. Don't think of like the car that you're going to have or the house that you're going to have or some shit like that. Don't imagine like how many zeros you're going to have in your bank account. No, 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 no. Think of the, the human relationships that you are going to have or that you want to have when you're 45, 50, 55, 60. Picture that. Imagine that. See, because I can tell you right now from the experience of a 51 year old man, which is what I am, that the, the human relationships and the experiences you have had with other people are the thing that will be of most value to you in your life. The toys, you know, a fancy car, fancy house, shit like that. Yeah, it'll give it like a momentary satisfaction, especially when you're young, especially when you struggle really hard to make it and all of a sudden have a breakthrough and have like a shit ton of money. Yeah, it'll be fun as a signifier of the, of the reward you're getting for all that sacrifice. But after about five minutes, you're gonna forget about the toys. Yeah, trust me. Yeah, when I made my first real money, yeah, I bought all kinds of doodads, all kinds of stupid shit. And I thought that they would make me really happy and they did for about five minutes. And then I sort of like forgot about them and they weren't very important. And now at 51, uh, you guys have seen my studio, right? It's, it's you know, it, it's, it's a semi junkyard, but it makes me happy. I could get toys if I wanted to. I could get fancy, flashy clothes if I wanted to. And before, when I was living in London, I had to wear nice clothes for various reasons because of the shit that I was doing, right? But now, you know, I'm relaxed. I'm here in Ukraine and Kharkov. I'm just, you know, taking it easy, right? And I don't worry about toys. And, and you won't either. So don't picture toys. Picture those relationships, those human relationships that you want to have. Now, why is it so important to picture yourself in the future like this, to, to picture this idealization of the man you want to become? Well, because it gives you an aim. It, it makes you like lift up your gaze and look at the horizon. Look at what's coming at you, okay? Because see, you are a young guy. You're 20, 25, maybe 30, right? Believe me, the, the, the decades between the age you are now and 45, 50, they go by like that. You won't even realize it. It'll be so fucking fast. I mean, in my own case, right? Like I said, I'm 51. Often as not, I, I think back on the times when I was like 13, 15, as if they were fucking yesterday. It's that fast. You have to understand this. And so it's important for you to lift up your gaze and stop looking at your fucking shoes and start looking forward at the horizon line. That horizon line is coming at you. It's coming at you awfully fucking fast. I mean, imagine you're like a Formula One racer, right? And you're in your car and the curves are coming at you at 200 miles an hour. Oh yeah. They're coming at you and you got to negotiate those curves. You got to turn to the left and turn to the right. And you know, you see what I'm saying? That's life. So you better be picturing where you want to be or else you're going to wind up in a place where you did not expect at all. See, unfortunately, when I was a young guy, I didn't do this experiment. I didn't do this, this thing of picturing myself in the future. I wish I had. Okay. Because when I was like a kid, when I was like 13, 15, yeah, I had like dreams of being a rock star, but that was just really just imaginings, you know, it was daydreams. It wasn't really like picturing myself in the future. It wasn't realistic. And I wish I'd done that exercise of picturing myself with all my flaws and all of my virtues, but older. An, an older man who hopefully has been able to control or at least manage and downplay his defects and is able to, you know, raise up his virtues and, and accentuate those virtues, those qualities, right? I mean, that, that's what you want to be when you're older, right? I wish I'd done this exercise when I was young, but I didn't. 
I was very foolish. And at the same time, I didn't have anybody to tell me to do this, right? Had I had somebody to tell me to do this exercise of picturing myself in the future, I probably would have made a lot of different decisions, important decisions in my life. Important decisions that I made stupidly and foolishly, and they were the wrong decisions. As I've said many times on the series of videos that I'm doing, it is just a matter of luck that I landed on my feet at this age of 51. Because I made a lot of stupid decisions in my time. And the fact that I'm on my feet and things are looking, you know, a-okay, I wish I could say that it was just foresight, but it wasn't. It was dumb luck. Do you want your future fortune to be based on luck? On just the spin of the wheel, you know? Yeah, you ever gone to uh, Vegas, to the roulette table? You know, they spin that wheel, right? And it's got what? It's got 36 numbers and zero and double zero. That means that if you bet on any given number, you know, the chances are one is success and 37 is failure. Mm -hmm. Those are the odds, in Vegas at least. And frankly, I think that the odds in Vegas are probably better than the odds at life. If you're not looking at the horizon, imagining yourself and where you want to be in your business, in your family life, in your social life, in all of the important aspects of your existence, if you're not picturing where you want to be, then fate, destiny, call it what you will, it's just gonna be this wave that carries you. It's gonna carry you and you're gonna be the surfer who's going without direction. And you might wind up lucky and land on this perfect sandy beach the way I did, and it was luck. Or you could wind up crashing against the shoals. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, you're, you're, you're bored, shattered to smithereens, and you battered and bruised, and much more importantly, broke and alone and with no friends and nothing in your life. Is that what you want? Because that will happen if you're not paying attention. That's why it's so important to be picturing yourself in the future, see? Because like I said at the beginning of this video, in our contemporary society, n nobody's giving you any kind of guidance and we are at a point in our civilization such that it is easy to survive. It's easy to survive but it's hard to have a good life. It's hard to create a life and meaning and purpose in your life. Because in the past, survival was all the meaning you needed. See? Just the struggle to survive gave your life meaning. But today, in this rich society that we're living in, with, with all of the accoutrements and all the technologies and all this shit that fills up our lives with, with, with distractions, right? We can exist easily, but that isn't enough to give our lives meaning. We have to make meaning. And the way you make meaning is by striving towards something. And if you can't figure out what it is, what your mountaintop is, what you were born to be in this life, then picture who you would like to be, the man you want to be at a point in your life when there is no more possibility of change. Because uh, from experience, again, once you hit 45, 50, that's it. You can't really change. I mean, if you were like a lawyer before and you hit 50, it's not like you can say one day, hey, fuck it, I'm gonna be a doctor and go to college again. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You get to 50 and that's pretty much curtains insofar as changing paths. And that's why when you're young, you got to be thinking about this shit. You have to be thinking about it for yourself because nobody is going to be doing it for you.